Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I've caked up a carnival mega cake. I've never been to a carnival. And what? You taste it? No. I caked my own carnival, <laughs> and then I went to it. Before I even started making this cake, Orhan Cody and I went on a shopping spree. We basically went on like a pretty woman shopping spree, but for candy. I was kind of looking for lots of candy and inspiration. Anything carnival-y we could get our hands on. So we headed down to the Carnival Depot and <laughs> if only. I want candy, I want props to put around it. I want like a tablecloth. <gasps> Guys, there's like water is everywhere. I came for carnival, but I feel like I'm gonna leave with more than that. These are perfect. This, I have a thing about like not taking the first package on the rack. Thank you. Go right ahead. Look at the big sign. Turn around. In the aisle. Or oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. It looks like ridiculously buttered. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like these? You don't? I still think they're primary. What do you mean primary? Like, they're primary and secondary colors. I was going for a more, like, colorful, but not like that. More like this. I like how the, the shade of blue is lighter, the shade of pink is lighter rather than red. I don't like anything primary. Look at our channel. <laughs> it's too obvious. It's, and these are the same colors, but bigger, so I'd have something to play off of. Mm. Do they have no medium size? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> okay. I'm like a kid. <laughs> yes, I like you. I also need this. Oh. <coughs> Why didn't we go to a carnival for inspiration? Is there some kind of winter carnival you know about? Yes, I know it's May currently, but it doesn't feel like May where we are. <laughs> Once I had everything I needed, I was feeling inspired. So now it's time to bake my cakes. I prepared 12 pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter. I divided it into four equal parts, dyed it pretty colors, and then baked them, cooled them, and chilled them. If you want exact instructions on what I did, you can click here. And now I'm going to level them with a ruler and a serrated knife, and I'm gonna remove the caramelization from the bottom of all four cakes. I need to remove the caramelization from the sides of these cakes because I just wanna see all my pretty color. So for this, I'm using a seven inch round pan. I'm gonna put it upside down on top of my layers and then use a small serrated knife right along the side of the pan to cut off that outer crust. Yeah, so there's no carnivals. So unless we were gonna fly somewhere else, I don't know where we would get that real inspiration. I think it's worth it. We should have flown somewhere else. That's what we should have done. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> now that all four of my cakes are just beautiful and colorful, I have yellow, pink, blue, and red. What I wanna do is cut each cake into three layers. Normally I only layer a cake in two if I layer it, but what I wanted was like half inch layers of all these colors so that I can alternate them. Right. I'm very excited. <laughs> My cakes are layered and now I have 12 layers of cake, three of each color. And before I simple syrup them, I need to put a secret chamber in. That's right, there's a secret carnival chamber. What do you think would come out of a secret carnival chamber? Clown. What kind of clown? Scary kind. <laughs> I have a secret chamber and in the secret chamber I'm gonna be putting these beautiful, uh, they're called sixlets. They're like little chocolate balls that are candy coated. But because my layers are very thin, I wanna make sure that the two bottom layers and the two top layers are solid. Now I can simple syrup all of my cakes. Did you dress Sir Squeeze in a carnival costume? I should have. I should have dressed Sir Squeeze up, but I feel like he's enough of a clown. Yeah, you know? Sure. Now it's time to fill and stack my cakes from the bottom up, obviously. And I'm filling my cake with Italian meringue buttercream, and then I have to keep in mind the secret chamber. So the first layer I lay down is a full layer of red cake, and then I lay a blue layer on that is also full. No secret chamber. 
Now I keep building up all of my secret chamber layers using the same color pattern, which is red, blue, pink, yellow. And each time I place my circle cutter in the middle to protect the chamber, protect the chamber at all costs. And then I spread my Italian meringue buttercream around it. And every time I add a new layer, I make sure to clean up the excess on the outside as well as the inside of the chamber. Yes, cakes are obviously decorated on the outside always, but this is a carnival cake. I feel like it has to be fun inside, out, and everywhere. You know what I mean? The party can't end when you slice this cake. Have you guys marked your calendars for Yo-Yo Day? It's one of my favorite days of the year where I get to spoil our amazing community a little bit. It means free treats for all my How to Cake It fans on June 6th. We have partnered with 29 bakeries around the world and you can head to a participating one near you for a free sweet treat. All you have to do is go in and be one of the first 50 people who proclaims Happy Yo-Yo Day! You can also share your experience on social using the hashtag Yo-Yo Day to be entered to win a prize pack. We partnered with Fat Daddy O's to give you the ultimate caking bundle. Head to the link in the description below for all the details. And I'll see you on Yo-Yo Day. Every day is Yo-Yo Day for me. Yep. What's today? Yo-Yo Day? <laughs> I wake up, oh, still yo-yo? Okay, it's yo-yo day. So I keep repeating this and my cake is almost all the way built. I have two full layers on the bottom. I've got eight layers of a secret chamber. And now what I need to do is fill that secret chamber. I'm just going to spoon in all these wonderful, colorful six slits until the chamber is completely full. And then once again, using the circle cutter, protect the chamber, spread more Italian meringue buttercream and add my final two layers, which are pink and then yellow. Now that my cake is complete, the chamber's really a secret now because you can't see it. I'm going to crump, where's my- Oh my God, we're in a different place. Excuse me, I need to go into the other room. I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you. I feel like you guys are just trying to get me farther away from my megaphone. <laughs> yep, I back. will climb mountains for this. No, not mountains. <laughs> not mountains. But I would walk into another room for it. So, now that my cake is built and the secret chamber is hidden, it's time to... Hello? Wow, that was very anticlimactic. Yeah. This is gonna be super carnival-y. Can you do like a in the background? Sure. Go. <laughs> step right up, step right up, everybody. It's time to crumb coat and chill. Was that carnival-y? Yeah. Good. Once my crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice this cake again with more Italian meringue buttercream. White is actually the perfect base for this cake because it's gonna get super colorful. And I'm using a bench scraper just to help me smooth out the cake. Once my cake is iced nice and smooth, I pop it in the fridge to chill. It's important that the buttercream is chilled for this next step because I'm gonna take a fabric measuring tape and wrap it around the base. Of the Wait, hold up, hold up. Oh. Hold up. <laughs> Before I did that, I moved the cake to a cake stand. Then that's another reason why I wanted the bottom of the cake to not have a chamber. Because if you try to... <laughs> I would totally do that. Yeah, because I knew I'd have to lift it up. Now I'm gonna take a fabric measuring tape and wrap it around the cake. And then, thank goodness it worked out because I marked my cake every one and a half inches. Just with the tip of a knife, I just made a little indent. And now I'm going to, I found some really, really long licorice. I didn't find it on the shopping trip with you guys. I found it on my own. I want to create stripes on this cake using my extra long licorice. Cause when I think of a carnival, I think of like red and white stripes and candy and cotton candy and popcorn. And now I'm going to add them to my cake using a ruler and the marks that I made every one and a half inches to line them all up. The cake is all is gonna remain white at the base. The color is coming from everything I'm adding to it. Oh really? Yeah. The next thing I want to do is add uh, some candy sticks between the licorice. Like you know those, I actually wish we had found more of these. I was trying to find them at the party shop. Like the candy sticks, they look like candy canes without the hook. 
So I happen to have some that are in a nice like light teal. I'm going to put them between the licorice, creating another stripe, but I've decided to alternate. So some of them are going to begin from the bottom of the cake up and then some will begin from the top of the cake down. Kind of like the way a merry-go-round moves. The next thing I want to do is add, I have some jumbo gumballs that are all the same colors as the six slits inside the secret chamber. And I'm going to lay them in a rainbow pattern at the top of each licorice on the cake. Kind of like a little fun border at the top of the cake. I want to top this cake with like a little popcorn bucket. So to make the bucket, I'm going to roll out some white gum paste and then I'm going to wrap it around some plastic cups that I have. They're actually from my son's third birthday. Yeah, they're dinosaur themed. Yes. <laughs> Trimming it flush to the bottom of the cup, the top of the cup and cutting a clean seam at the back. And the great thing about a topper like this is you can actually make it way in advance. The more in advance you make it, the sturdier it will be. If is it's, that the, the giant thing that I saw outside? Yeah. No, it's this. Here, see? My little cup. No, I thought it was this. Face. Does this look like gum paste, Farhan? We should just do the whole interview with me like this. <laughs> it's time to decorate my popcorn container. So the first thing I need to do is remove the gum paste from the cup. These have been drying for like three days for me. So what I did is I just placed a little bowl underneath upside down and then gently tried to pull the gum paste off the cup. Did it. Now what I want to do is roll out some more gum paste, nice and thin. I'm going to use that for a label later on. And I'm also going to roll out some red fondant, nice and thin. And from this fondant, I'm going to cut stripes. And then I'm going to flip these stripes over and brush on a little bit of clear piping gel. And what I want to do is create a striped pattern on the popcorn cup. Now what's tricky about this is the popcorn cup is wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So your stripes, like the space between your stripes will change from the bottom to the top of the cup. So what I like to do is lay on two at opposite ends, then two between that, and then two stripes in the middle of each quarter of the cup. Does that make sense? Because there's footage. And then at the bottom of the cup, which is on top, I just trimmed the excess fondant. Now, to make the little label, I have a cutter uh, in a label shape. I really enjoy that cutter. I don't get to use it enough. Why would anyone invent a label shaped cutter? Because they're brilliant. For cake decorators like me, who love cake decorating, and labels. And write popcorn in the middle, and then I'm just gonna trace the outer edge, just to make it look prettier, and glue that on to the front of my cup. Yay. Now I'm gonna fill my cup with popcorn, I have this bright yellow popcorn. I'm filling the cup and as popcorn falls onto the top surface of the cake, I'm just leaving it because I'm like that. Yeah, we know. I'm not like that. But the thing <laughs> is like when you go to carnivals, not that I've been, but you know, when you go to like an amusement park, there's popcorn everywhere. There's popcorn on the floor, people drop popcorn. So I figure I can let loose on this cake. This is hurting you on the inside. It really is. And I did, like, I let them fall, but then I, I placed a few. <laughs> I think I need to go to, like, Placement Anonymous or something. <laughs> Hi, I'm Yolanda, and I always put things in their proper place. Do you remember when we went shopping, we found lollipops that came in a bunch and looked like balloons. Yeah. That was so meant to be. Yeah. That was really meant to be. So I'm gonna add these two like lollipop balloon bunches behind and to the side of my popcorn. It's my favorite time, not really. It's time to chop rock candy off the sticks. So I'm chopping rock candy off sticks. I have pink, green, and blue. And now what I'm gonna do is take that rock candy and just sort of fill up the top of my cake stand. Guys, next week I am caking what I hope will be a decoration for a very popular game. And it's a bit of a cake off, shall we say. Make sure you come back next Tuesday because I'm gonna need your help. We can't forget about cotton candy. No. We can't. I feel like that is necessary. Like when I think of a carnival, I think of bags of cotton candy. So 
I am gonna take little tufts of blue cotton candy. I feel like the cake could use some cool colors. And I'm just gonna place it at the top of every second like turquoise candy sticks. So it's, it's like almost like little cotton candy flames. Mm. I feel like I just prepared the carnival and now it's time to go to the carnival. It was amazing. It was so colorful. It was like when I cut into it, everything was so colorful. It makes me so happy. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe to this channel. And while you're waiting for next Tuesday, here are some more awesome things. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the outro or what?